This video alternates between the present and dreams about the past. Over the Shenandoah River, green text reads, Harpers Ferry, 1861, dreams of being there. In a museum and in front of a mural of Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, a park ranger gives a class of middle school students a tour. And so the town now had to choose between Alfred Barber and Andrew Hunter, um, as Johnny Thompson had taken his name off the ballot as a candidate. Um, Alfred Barber, though, was under much pressure and campaigning. He was indeed the superintendent at the armory. Yes, you did get elected to go to the Virginia succession. One student falls asleep. She wakes up on a bench in historical clothes. White text reads, 1861 January. Whoa, where am I? Yeah, I heard that John A. Thompson had his name withdrawn from the convention. Yeah, I heard that it's now between Alfred Barber and Andrew Hunter. Back to the present. Julie, come on. Come on, let's go. I just had the weirdest dream. Come on. Another exhibit. Some people in the South wanted to resist the inauguration of Lincoln by taking Washington, Harpers Ferry, um, and other federal property. But the federal government hmm. was... I wonder how people thought about that. Another student falls asleep and dreams of the past. No, I heard a lot of people are against the inauguration of Lincoln. Do you think they'll take over Washington? No, I think they have it pretty well under control. The present? So let's move on to the next spot. An exhibit in a store. So in March of 1861, Alfred Barber decided to resign from his position at the armory. And does anybody remember what his job was at the armory? I believe he was a superintendent. He was a superintendent. And um, this image he in the was going to Washington to deliver his resignation papers to the Secretary of War. The present. Um, it was unlikely that Secretary Cameron would actually allow um, Barber to resign. So let's go out to Arsenal Square and find out what happened when Lieutenant Jones was here. Outside. Some people thought that Lieutenant Jones um, was doing this out of the best interest of the Union, setting fire to these arsenal buildings and the armory so that the Confederate forces couldn't get the guns that were here and the machinery to make thousands more. The people of this town, though, this was their livelihood. And Another so student falls asleep. The majority of that night with buckets and water trying to put the fires out. Against a brick wall, she joins a group of townspeople passing buckets down a line. White text reads, 1861 April. The present. Excuse me, your class is what? Near the Potomac River. Okay, so Colonel Thomas Jackson, do you know who he was, who he was called later? A student falls asleep and sees Stonewall Jackson through a window. White text reads, 1861. To take control of the railroad line. And there's one going into Virginia, one going into Maryland. And if he takes the Baltimore and Ohio line, the BNO, he can cut off a major supply route for the Union Army. The present. Okay, so we'll take a short little break from what we're talking about. I'm going to let you guys go over and take some pictures if you want at the point. Um, it's really pretty when the rivers come together, so if you want to head on over. A student falls it's asleep so and walks near the Shenandoah River. The White text reads 1861 June. Yellow text reads, come help see what the Confederates did to the Shenandoah Bridge. The student runs off. Um, in June of 1861, and also um, demolished the rifle factory further upstream. So let's go, um, let's go look and see what happened on the anniversary of John Brown's raid in 1861. In a museum, a student falls asleep. Do you remember when that was? 1859? 1859, so just two years later, in October of 1861. On a battlefield, text reads 1861 October. Troops march and fire. And trying to keep the Union from controlling the local resource. The Shenandoah River. In December 1861, all was quiet along the Shenandoah. White text reads 1861 December. Scrolling yellow text reads. Credits, director Ashley Pugh, screenwriter Savannah Jack, storyboard artist Julia Arganda, costumers Nicole Flynn, Savannah Jack, actors Savannah Jack, Heather Rose, Julia Arganda, Jared Prasma, Nicole Flynn, Ashley Pugh, Autumn Cook, videographers Heather Rose, Jared Prasma, editors Heather Rose, Julia Arganda, Ashley Pugh. Special thanks to Autumn Cook, Autumn Cooked yeah. Meredith Matherly, Midge Magic, Mr. Spurgis. Text reads. And remember. Ranger Autumn. Autumn Cooked ya. White text on a black background reads, Special thanks to Journey Through Hallowed Ground Partnership, www.hallowedground.org, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Rust Family Foundation.